right. Hello, my lovely beginners. So this is a lesson to review note reading with you all. So note reading is when we read on the staff and there's five lines on the staff. And I've noticed some people have been a little bit confused on how this works, which is totally understandable. So I wanted to take some time to properly review it for you. And please let me know if you're still struggling with this and if I can answer any questions. Um, this is super important moving forward. You need to know how to read um, the notes on the D string and the A string in order to successfully um, read out loud numbers 44 and 45, okay? So what I wanted to do is show you this little website here. And hopefully, there we go. I can share the screen here. And you can see this awesome website, which is musictheory.net. And it's got all of these pictures here for us. So we're gonna go to the lessons. We're gonna go down here to our lesson about the staff. Now, as you can see here, the staff has five lines. We can count them together. One, two, three, four, five. Now, it's kind of weird, but these lines don't have anything to do with your strings, okay? So don't think about them as, oh, I have four strings, but five lines, that's really confusing. The staff is what all musicians use to write the music down, okay? So it doesn't matter if you're playing saxophone or piano or viola or double bass, it doesn't matter which instrument you're using, we're gonna use the staff, okay? So the music staff is just something that we use um, as musicians, right? It's kind of like notebook paper for musicians. You know how we write our, we write our words on lined paper, we write our notes on lined paper as well. We just need to have five lines because as the notes go up and down in pitch and sound, that we'll see them on the paper go up and down. So the most important thing for you to know right now is that there are five lines on the music staff and four spaces, okay? So we can count them here and they show us the numbers on this, which is the reason I chose this website to show you. You can see here we have the numbers one, two, three, four, five those are on the lines and then one, two, three, four spaces. It's important that you remember that we count from the bottom to the top here. So the bottom space is space one, then we have space two, three, and space four at the top. All right, and then the lines, we have line one at the bottom and then line two, three, four, line five is at the top, okay? All right, so down here, you'll see there's a clefs. So clefs assign individual notes to certain lines or spaces. So if we're playing a low instrument like the cello or the bass, we're going to need what we call the bass clef, okay? And that's gonna tell you that you're playing the lower half of the notes, all right? If you see the treble clef, that tells you that you're playing the upper half or the violin. So if you open your music book, if you're playing the cello, some I, I think out of all my beginners, I either have cello, cellists or violin players. So my violin players, you'll see this treble clef. That tells you you're playing violin. You can also play treble clef notes on the flute. You can play them on the piano, but only on the upper keys. Let's see, you can play them with the clarinet. You can play some of them with the viola, okay? But you can't play the bass notes on the violin because the violin's too small. That's why we need the big cello to bring in the low sounds. So here we've got our bass clef. If you're playing the, the cello, you'll see this at the start of your music, all right? You can also play cello notes. You can play them on um, the double bass, some of them. You can play them on the tuba, the big instruments in the band. So generally, the bigger the instrument is, the lower the sound is. This one tells you low sounds. This one tells you high sounds, okay? All right. So if we're playing treble clef, so cellos, this is, this is going to be sort of what it's like for you but um, on, the, on the bass clef, it's different. If you're playing violin, it'll, the, the treble clef will be here to the side, all right? And you'll see that it's circling this line here. So it's telling you that this line, which is line two, is G, okay? And so then we build the rest of the alphabet around that. So if G is here on the second line, as we go up, all right, our musical alphabet is seven letters. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And then we repeat A, B, C, D, E, F, G. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And it just keeps going, okay? It never stops. 
So after G comes A, you see we're going up in sound. We went from the line to the next space. Then we go to the next letter of the alphabet. So after G comes A, after A comes B, you can see it's going up. It works the same way on the, on the bass clef. It's just gonna be different lines for you guys. So here we have G, A, and B. And I see it, here we go. G, A, B, C, it keeps going. So there's our alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and it just keeps going up and down, okay? So um, once you run out of space, you can just keep going and you add some lines. Violins, you won't see this yet, but cellos, you'll have to read ledger lines right away for your A string notes. Same for my violas, all right? Oh, here we go, perfect. They're gonna do it for the bass clef. So the bass clef is actually known as the F clef. So you can see that the bass clef is pointing out right here, the two line or the two dots, they're surrounding this line three here. So this is an F clef, it's telling you that this line is F, all right? And then just like we did for the treble clef, we built the rest of it around G, the bass clef builds it around F. So here's F, oh, and it's gonna go all over the place. I went too fast. Oh no, it just does all that. It's gonna go up and then it shows us going down. So you can see, actually, this is a pretty good picture. It's gonna go up, F, G, A, and then back down, F, E, D, C, B, D, R, 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 and then it's going lower. So when it goes up, the sound gets higher. Uh, and as the, the notes go lower down, the sound is gonna get lower, okay? So each of the lines or spaces represents a letter, okay? And the letters, hopefully you know where most of the letters are on your instrument from learning your twinkles, okay? So if you learned your twinkles, you know, okay, A, this is open A. All right, I know where open A is on my cello and you can play it. This one here is open D. So I'll show you and I'm gonna draw a picture with you. Whoa, so many lines. This is when they're both together. You can see the, the treble clef is higher and the bass clef is lower. They do go together. And if you play piano, you play all the notes, okay? So we're gonna stop right there with the lesson. The most important thing you remember is that each line and each space represents a letter, okay? So now let's go ahead together and I would really suggest that you draw this with me, okay? I really like having things on paper in front of me being on the computer for class is a little bit hard so let's write this down and i think you'll find this really really helpful i know it's in your book but i want you to write it down again because it's really really good for you so let's take a piece of paper oh let's see and i'm going to do this two times i'm going to do it for cello and for violin okay so first thing you're going to do is take your piece of paper if you need to, if you need to pause the video and go get some paper, go ahead and do that. Once you're ready with your paper and your pencil, you're going to draw. I like turning my page sideways for this. You know, if you have a big piece of paper, you might have space to do it like this, but I'm going to turn it sideways so I can draw five lines. Okay, there they are. Are they beautiful and perfect? No, but are there five of them? Yes. Now I'll first do this for violins. So violins, you're gonna draw a treble clef. It'll look kind of like that. I start off with like a little umbrella. So it's a J and then it goes all the way up to the top, all right? Once you draw your J, then you're gonna take your swirl to the right and circle line two. So I swir it's kind of like a big a J and then an S with a swirly at the bottom. So I do a J up. And then I take the swirl to the right and I cross it over and then I circle the second line. The most important thing is that it goes above and then it circles this one, line two. That's how it's saying this is G. You see how this kind of looks like a fancy G? Like sort of, you know, not totally, but it kind of looks like a fancy G. It's telling you this is G. And this is actually G on your D string. And we've been using that note a lot for Twinkle Little Star, right? So now we're going to write in, um, actually I'll do this for the bass clef at the same time so I can just show you both ways. So go ahead and take some time, write that out. 
bass clef people are also going to draw five lines. Everybody, doesn't matter what instrument you're using, you use five lines to show the notes. Okay. So bass clef people are drawing five lines. Your clef is actually easier to draw. First, start with a little dot on line four. And then you draw like a, a backward C with a kind of tail like that. And then you're going to draw two dots around that same line, line four. So that is the bass clef. You can see this kind of looks like a fancy F. All right. And that is actually F on your, or F sharp on your D string is going to be on line four. So we've been using that note a lot. So again, the bass clef is centered on the note F. And the treble clef is centered on the note G. All right. Once you've drawn your staff, which is the five lines, and your clef, which is the swirly or the F with sort of a C. Once you've drawn that, then you're ready for the most important part of this lesson. And this is the last thing we're going to do here together. So this is our note reading review. And it's really important that you know where the notes are on the staff for the D and the A strings. So I'll first show you where open D and open A are. And we'll draw them right at the beginning. So open A is going to be in space two. And on violin, it's kind of tricky. Open D is actually underneath the staff. So that's technically space zero. <laughs> All right. So you can draw a little note head like that. We're not going to worry about the stems and stuff right now. So you can just draw a little oval. And you can see it kind of takes up the whole of space two. So this is space one. This is space two, and that's where A is. That's open A. And open D goes below the staff right there, right? So please draw those. And I'll, I will draw those for the bass clef as well. For the bass clef, the open strings are on lines. So you're going to draw on, you see how these notes are on the lines? Those are your open A and open D. Open D is the lower note. So it's going to go on line three and open A goes on line five. So cellos go ahead and draw this. You'll see that I drew a note here on the third line and I drew a note here on line five. All right. So now when you go to your music and you try to read Matthew's March, you'll notice, or actually it's even better if you look at number 45 in your book. You'll notice it starts on open D. For the cellos, you'll see open D. The first note is D and it has a little zero above it. That's telling you it's open D. And you'll notice that it's on line three for cello. And for violin, the first note for number 45 is below. It's open D down here. All right. Now I'm going to give you uh, the rest of the notes kind of all at once. but I will show you as I draw. I'm gonna do the violins now. So D, E. And I want you to like pause this and write it down and then let me know if you have any questions. So these are the notes you need to know so far. All right. We have four notes on each string and you can see as we go up, we're gonna add, add fingers and it goes higher. So here's the finger numbers for violin underneath. Your open D is here, open A is here. And you can see we just go up one. We go up to the next line and then the next space and then the next line. So D, E, F sharp, G. E is line one, F sharp is space one, G is, space, is line two. And then after G comes A. Now we go to the next string for A on the violin. A is always going to be here, though, if you're reading treble clef. It doesn't matter what instrument. So it's kind of weird because these don't have really anything to do with your strings. So it's kind of confusing. But I wanted to draw this picture for you so you can see that these are your strings. So we've got D, E, F sharp, G, and then the next string is A. A starts on space two. And then we go to B, which is still on the A string, first finger. And then we go to C sharp, which is still on the A string, second finger. And then we go to D, which is still on the A string. All right. 
So if you're someone who likes to color like me, I'll show you, I'm gonna color them string by string, okay? But first I'll go ahead and write the cello ones as well. So if you're someone who likes to color, you can go grab a cup, two colors at least, one for your D string and one for your A string. And I'll show you what this looks like for cello. It's the same idea, but they're in, the, in a different spot. So these are the notes you need to you need to know your D string notes and your A string notes. So the D string notes start on line three. And let me go to D is on line three. E is on space three. F sharp is on space four. And G is on space or F sharp is on line four, excuse me. And G is on space four. Then we go to the A string. A is going to be the top line here, line five. And then you'll notice you have to use ledger lines to take you up above for the C sharp and for the D. So we have A, B is above, C sharp is on the line on one line, and D sharp or D is above the line on a ledger line here. Okay, so you can pause the video and copy this down. Make sure you understand where these letters are. You will need to be able to read all of these letters for numbers 44 and 45, right? Now, if that works for you, you can stop the video here. You can be done and go practice 45. There will be a video you can play that along with me, but I'm gonna color them because I find that really to be helpful to color them. So here we go. Let's see, for the D string, I'm going to choose green. And for the A string, I'm going to do orange, right? So here are my D string notes on the cello. We've got D, E, F sharp, and G. There goes my notebook. And then here are the A string notes, A, B, C sharp, and D, okay? So you'll see, you can draw it like that. And it doesn't matter where these notes are, they can, de they can be mixed up completely, but as long as it's on line three, it's D. If it's on line five, it doesn't matter where it is, right to left, that's about rhythm if it's where it is right to left. But right now we're talking about just up and down, all right? So if it's on line five, it's A, all right? If it goes, if it's above, it's on the line, on an extra line here, that's C sharp, all right? I'll draw the same colors for the violet. Oh, here, cellos. Another important thing is which finger numbers are you using? So for the cellos, you're doing one third finger. Remember on the cello, we're going to skip the second finger because your instrument is so big that you're not going to use your second finger at all. So you're gonna use open string, first finger. You're gonna use third finger for F sharp and C sharp. And then you're gonna use fourth finger for the G and the D. Right. And that's your D on the A string. All right. Now violins, if you want to color with me, you can choose your own colors. But I'm going to do green and orange because I like how they contrast. So D, E, F sharp, and G are on the D string. And A, B, C sharp, and D are on the A string, like that, all right? So those are the notes you're going to need to be able to read this week. And by the, when I see you next week, we're gonna check in again. Next week, I would like you to say and play numbers 44 and 45, all right? So I'm gonna stop the lesson here. Please let me know if you have any questions. Thank you for being great students and I'll see you soon.